Greetings everyone. I have yet another book review. It is Play the Forest School Way by Jane Worrell and Peter Houghton. Nature Explorers is the first major section. Forest Arts, Survival Skills, and Wildlife Team Games. Nature Explorers, the first section, it primarily covers just different ways that children can engage with nature. Like let's say they go on a nature walk, just different ways that they can um, personally engage with nature in a physical, tangible way. Um, like the very first suggestion in the book is called a journey stick. This basically is just a child finding a stick that they have an affinity towards and decorating it with found objects. And then they can use it kind of like a walking stick if they feel inclined. And then it goes into some other ideas to explore nature with, like woodland mapping, acorn hide and seek, observational games with squirrels, scavenger hunts, forest arts. My son and I, we actually um, made this craft. We used a small palm drill. I used it mostly. He watched. I was safe. <laughs> and we used a bit of twine to make um, a necklace or to hang around a tree for decoration. Um, our tree. We weren't, we weren't vandalizing any other trees and the tree was okay with it in case anyone feels inclined to say that maybe I shouldn't be doing that. We, we took it down. All was well. We're not vandalizing nature or anyone else's property. So it's all good there. Um, yes. And then it has an idea for magic wands, kind of the same, the same concept as the journey stick. You take a stick and you decorate it and you use it in imaginative play. It's fun. Mud faces. You don't mind your children getting dirty. And then this is one, Ice Art. I'm so excited about this. It's the very end of November, currently getting into the winter uh, Christmas season. And um, I've seen all of these really cool ice art um, crafts that people have done, like on um, Instagram and whatnot. I've never personally done it, but it looks so fun. Um, yeah, so they have ideas for that. You can use um, muffin tins, any sort of small container, and then of course you can also use natural food dyes if you'd like, or just conventional food dyes if you're not opposed to that. Color the water or just leave it clear, and then take some found objects from nature, pine cones, dead flowers, uh, pine needles, whatever you'd like, and freeze them in the tins, if you're using tins for example. And then you would want to attach a string in some situations, like a piece of twine during the freezing process. And then you can then take it out of the container and hang it like an ornament um, on a tree. And then they go into making a bow and arrow. Of course, you want to make sure that this is age appropriate for your children. Woodland jewelry, like I said, maybe get a palm drill for some of these activities. A folding saw could be your friend as well, but of course you as the adult would want to be the supervisor unless you feel comfortable letting an older child use it on their own. And another example of a necklace, we did this one as well, a necklace out of an acorn. So if you have oak trees where you are, you could do that or find some at a park. Some fun ideas. Stick frames. That's the last craft in this section. Just taking sticks wrapping twine around the edges to make a frame or whatever you'd like. And then third section is survival skills. This section is not that extensive, but the information in it is still pretty good. It covers rope tying skills, essential knots, goes through about half a dozen knots, it covers three basic shelter types. Tarpaulin shelter, I'm probably butchering that, sorry, but that involves, not surprisingly, using a tarp and rope to make a shelter. You want to basically take a rope, tie it between two trees, uh, drape a tarp over it, and then secure the edges to make a tent-like structure. <laughs> and then, if you do not have a tarp and you have access to branches, you could make a shelter such as this, a bushcraft shelter such as this one. 
Nice illustration, simple but gets the point across. A tent-like bush, bushcraft shelter, and then they also give an example of a teepee-like bushcraft shelter. And again, obviously you'll want to be safe when you're doing this with your children. Make sure that it's an age-appropriate activity and you're supervising as an adult. I don't know how blurry that was when I was focusing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried to do my best. And then it gives the idea of mini, mini shelters. My son has made a, a shelter for bugs before. That was fun when he was younger, like three or four, he was into doing that. Fire, that's paramount to survival. And um, some ideas for that. A campfire enclosed by longer branches or uh, logs, even small logs, as a safety parameter. And then it has the last little, I guess you could call it a craft in the fire section, is a chimney kettle. I mean, if you're really inventive, you could make like a rocket stove or something as a substitute. Or if you have a chimney kettle that you purchased, you can utilize that to do outdoor cooking, supervising as the parent, obviously, again. <laughs> and this is their little diagram of a chimney kettle. Lots of options for a small outdoor stove. All you have to do is go to YouTube. <laughs> and then it does have a very, I mean, very, very small section on foraging um, wild food. And none of the, none of the uh, foods listed are items that can really be found in the winter, the colder parts of the year, at least where I am. Um, like it covers cleavers. That's a spring. That's a very early spring um, into summer in some sections wild food and then it goes into elderflower fritters we're not going to find that now <laughs> and blackberry ice that's a fall that would be a fall activity and then it has the very last section wildlife team games and this section it just goes through some really creative games that children can play in a group setting um one's called forest fire <laughs> And then the skills there being covered in this game is being active, physical skills, teamwork, self-reliance, confidence, strategic thinking, role play. So with each game, it kind of covers what areas of growth uh, could be achieved in playing the game. Web of life, much more intricate. You need a rope. Fun nonetheless. And then, yep, that's pretty much the extent of the book. Hungry Birds is another game. Very, very fun, creative, creative games. This one you only need two. Anyway, yes, highly recommend the book. Play the forest school way. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to make it a priority to get outside more and do these sorts of crafts um, now. Um, even though it's cold, we can still do that. We can still get outside and explore nature and learn different skills. Um, so anyway, I thank you for joining me today and I wish you a happy start of the holiday season. I hope you are well and feeling blessings in your life and I hope you get the book and explore nature with your children this December. Thank you. Bye.